Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Magda and today we're going to talk about quality of life in Luxembourg, so let's get started. So maybe you've seen my video or not where I was showing Luxembourg in the ranking for people living abroad, how is it for um, expats? I will link the video at the end of this video so you don't have to worry, you can watch it after. And today we're going to specifically talk about the quality of life, what is nice in Luxembourg and or not, and how does it work. So let's start with the first thing that is very interesting, that Luxembourg is actually on ninth place in the happiness ranking based on three years. So from 2020 to 2022, Luxembourg was on a place number nine. First is Finland, then is Denmark, Iceland, Israel, Netherlands, Sweden, Norway, Switzerland, Luxembourg, and New Zealand. Israel, I know that it was very much questionable how it comes, but yeah, this is the ranking. Unfortunately, we are after Switzerland. If you watch the video about the other ranking, you know why I just said it. And there are a few other rankings that talk about the income, the education, healthcare. So, so yeah, it's usually relatively quite high up. Then, talking about healthcare. Healthcare in Luxembourg is a public healthcare with CNS, which is a national system for healthcare for the, that you pay with your taxes, with your salary, and the healthcare is given to you based on uh, that. And it basically works kind of like a private healthcare in a way that most of the things that are affordable, you go and pay up front and then you reimburse most of the costs, like between 70 and 90%, sometimes 100, uh, mainly for kids, the percentages are higher. And then if it's something big or emerging, like, I don't know, you have to go to the hospital, usually it's covered immediately. And then you just have to pay some taxes or you have to pay some medicines that are usually also discounted if you got the prescription. So I would say on that two points, Luxembourg is quite nice. So I would say apparently happiness and healthcare. Then let's talk about education system. So education system in Luxembourg, the most interesting part of it is that it's multilingual. So you are taught in French and German and in Luxembourgish when you are in a public school and then you have other languages, which is usually English. Then if you are in a private school or in a European school, you have slightly different language situation, but it's always very multilingual. You usually get out of the school with at least three languages, which is kind of nice because we get out of the schools in Poland with supposedly three languages, meaning Polish, English and I don't know German or Russian or French but usually English is already a struggle and then German and the other second language is usually very very poor. Example number one, me, I had 12 years of German and I cannot say anything. So yeah that's that's how we are and I know that not everybody getting out of the school are super happy to speak French or super happy to speak German. I know that they are not but they are capable of doing everything in this language like you know work, uh, read the books, speak supposedly, but they might not be the happiest to speak in the language. They are fluent in all the languages. And Luxembourg is seen relatively with a high level of schools. I think it changes from year to year. So yes, yeah, so that's something that it's always good to check, but it's never set as a bad educational system. And then Luxembourgish University, it's actually quite nice in a level of education. Plus, as any rich country, they just have money for university. So they have a lot of money for publications, research, so all the stuff that, for example, we miss in Poland because universities are for free, government doesn't put too much money, and we, for example, are not so high in the rankings because one of the requirements for the rankings is amount of publications, amount of research, and the publications are expensive. To put an article is 2K, to do the research is tons of money, so if the government or the university doesn't provide you the money, you cannot go, but the level is very, very high. However, in the rankings, it's not. Luxembourg at least has the assets to pay the staff with, so that's very, very nice. And then a lot of people come from abroad to study here and they are, of course, international. So another interesting part is like a social safety, not only from how safe you feel in a life, but how safe you feel in a situation when you are unemployed, when you are pregnant, when uh, you gave a birth, what is happening there. So very big thing is an unemployment benefits that you have. I made a full video about it, so I'm not going to say it twice, but like there are benefits and they give you help and they provide you courses, they provide you counseling, language courses, skills courses, and of course benefits in form of money. Then another part is that you get paternity leave, maternity leave, so both of the parents can go for the leave when the kid is born. You get some support for kids money-wise. In Germany it's called uh, Kindergeld, in Poland it's 500 plus because you are getting 500 uh, PLN. But yeah, it's a program where you are given some money for a kid 
and then they give you some additional money with the beginning of the school year and there are for sure much more these are the ones that are very common and i know of but there are a lot of things for both private people and families that governments help you with and then of course the super nice part free public transportation in luxembourg that also adds up to your you know easy life you don't have to think about buying the ticket you don't have to think about spending money on it so that's also nice very important part of luxembourg which is a huge part of the quality of life it's work-life balance everybody here not everybody but like so many people here are so focused on work-life balance it was one of the biggest assets for luxembourg shops are closed on sunday usually and not a lot of people work on Sunday. People rather, like, not everyone, but like, if you have an office job, you rather no work on the weekends. If you have an office job, you rather don't do nights. Night working is very much restricted for both point of view, for the employee and for the city. So like, for example, they don't want people to have bars open until 5 a.m. because people want to sleep. And at the same time, people who work in a bar, they also want to sleep, not only people outside. So there are many things that sometimes are annoying, sometimes, but on the other hand, are super nice from the point of view that people have life. Stores are closing usually around 6, 7 p.m. So people can go home and enjoy their life. Office jobs, as I said, you have to have special permits in Luxembourg to work at night. So usually you have restrictions as well on what time you can exit the office. You have restrictions on the overtime. And yes, everything can be bridged, but at least it's slightly more respected than in many countries. From the cultural and recreational part point of view, point of view, it depends what you like. There are tons of theater, opera, philharmonies, performances going on. You have tons of natures around. They're not going to be a huge mountains, but you have quite a few nice places. You have many things for kids. You have many festivals. You have many things for the city celebrations. You have a lot of wine tasting. You have a lot of things connected to wine, some things connected with food or like seasonal stuff. So for example, this uh, season, like fall, you have a uh, apple uh, celebrations, you have a nut celebration. So you do have these things, you just have to look up for them. And then you have a lot of things that are created by city, as I said, concerts, festivals, museums, all the things that you can usually do elsewhere as well. But I think if you look for it, you will not find Luxembourg boring. And from the cultural point of view as well, it can be interesting. Also, because there is a lot of mixes of cultures, so sometimes you will see stuff in a cinema or in a theater that will be influenced by other countries so i don't know brazilian or portuguese uh influence or even made by portuguese or brazilians the same spanish or maybe more french influence so you'll see a lot of things going on like this then let's talk about housing and living housing is a terrible situation in luxembourg i think it's one of the most difficult places to find the housing in Europe. The prices, unfortunately, are getting more and more ridiculous. The possibility of finding a house, it's super difficult. And yeah, to live alone, yeah, you either spend tons of money or you just decide to share the flat, uh, the flat, like living in a room, or you are a couple and you get a studio, but it's usually very, very difficult and very expensive to even find something. People are just hunting the stuff. So like the moment it's going out and it's a good offer, it's gone. You have a lot of agencies, you have a lot of fees with the agency. So housing situation is unfortunately getting worse and worse. And sometimes it's getting just ridiculous about the prices. And it's, as I said, it's also very, very difficult to find something. And about community and uh, inclusivity, I would say, me personally, it's a first place and I lived in few places abroad when I don't feel like an outsider. Around 50% of the population is immigrants, so you have to be welcomed. People are always from outside, so you don't feel like an outsider. I can assure you that you will not meet a lot of Luxembourgish people. If you do, great for you. I didn't and it's very difficult for me to find them. You will have literally people from everywhere not only from europe you will have people from outside of europe you will have people from really really different backgrounds people do hear everything and yeah you will find them everywhere like it's super nice that people are just going out you can meet them you can get to know the culture you can understand how their life is and how much it's different from yours and i think it's very beautiful that this is the way it is i think it's very nice that you can explore the culture like this that you can see that the things are not the same everywhere, that you can learn from other people. I personally enjoy it as well, but at the same time, you will have a lot of things that Luxembourg will try to put into it. So they will try to put some culture, even within the immigrants. Workplaces like mine will teach you Luxembourgish. You will have, for example, prime minister coming for the events. Either if it's going to be Schuber foyer or if it's going to be after work, how do you call it? Uh, Aperi Network 
or if it's gonna be any other place, he's gonna come and he's gonna be like one of us. He's gonna, on Schubert for year, he was going and he was cutting a ham and making, you know, burgers and sausages in an apron and like, you know, like any other person, just because they know that it's very important. And then in Napoli Network, you would just hang out, talk with people, say hello, introduce, do a little chit chat. So it's super nice. You can actually sit up. I still haven't managed to meet him, but I saw many of my friends did, uh, so they are very present. So they also try to incorporate a bit of his Luxembourgish culture and welcome you as well. And there's a lot of convenient things for you. So tons of stuff is in English. Almost every single governmental website is translated to English. Wherever you're gonna send an email or call, they will somehow be able to communicate with you. If not them, the person that you contacted, they're gonna forward it to you. If you know French, easy peasy, everyone will know French, uh, but yeah. That's something that I really, really enjoy in Luxembourg and makes me feel very much welcome in a country. And I'm very sad when I see in the comments that people say that Luxembourg is not the best, that it's not welcoming. I really have never felt so welcome to the country. I can tell you that I, I lived, I mean, not everywhere, but I lived in US for one year, in Colombia for three months. I did my Erasmus in Spain for one year. I lived two years in Italy. And trust me, none of these places welcomed me as much as they welcome me here. All the places they require they were somehow making fun of my language. They were somehow requiring me to learn their language. Even if when I went to US, I spoke very well English, they would still be people who would make fun of my accent, would say something uh, to me wrongly, that I'm doing something wrong, but not in a nice way to help me, more to like make fun of me. In Spain, it was sometimes very difficult as well with Spanish. In Italy, it was fairly easy, but I was never accepted as an Italian. Even if I would, I mean, of course I am not Italian, but even if I speak Italian, I would never be treated as an Italian person. And trust me, I would be capable of working in Italian. I would have interviews in Italian and people would supposedly accept it, but no, not really because you're not Italian. So there are the things like this that are icking me a bit. I never try to work, you know, within government or wherever you need Luxembourgish. So maybe it's the same here, but on the opposite side, you have tons of opportunities where you don't really need to deal with all the Luxembourgish and all the people, the, let's say public sector, for Luxembourg in terms of work that it's so much easier. So yeah, I hope that video shows you a little bit about quality of life in Luxembourg. If you enjoyed it, I would be very happy if you would hit the like button. That helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm so this video will reach more people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my channel. I talk a lot about Luxembourg, living here, jobs, salaries and expenses. So if you enjoy this type of topics and you don't want to miss any of my future videos, subscribe to my channel. And here I leave this video about where is Luxembourgish language coming from and the Luxembourgish playlist. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day and I'll see you in another video.